they're abnormal, unusual, and wildly entertaining. <laughs> Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 funniest movie creatures. I tell you, it's great to be here in your room. Where are you from? For this list, we're highlighting cinematic creations that make us laugh through their physical appearance and or comedic dialogue. I mean, it's all about the pleasure thing, you know what I'm saying? Some are individual beings, while others are part of their own unique band of outsiders. But all are decidedly not human. Number 10, Paul Hall. Put the phone down. <laughs> oh, f me. We live in a more accepting world nowadays, but even so, nobody seems to appreciate a crude alien being with an enormous set of space balls. Oh! Well, except for a couple of sci-fi loving blokes who find themselves on a road trip with an intergalactic figure from a couple of towns away. Yes, but it's not like I set my phaser to faint. <laughs> You've got a phaser? Voiced by Seth Rogen, Paul connects with the Brits during a trip to Comic-Con, and his inhibitions prove to be the most unique thing about him. Why would you oh, do that? I'm not gonna eat a dead bird, am I? <laughs> Aside from his giant alien head and testicles, of course. He's kind of rude. Curses a lot. And a couple times I've seen him scratch his space man balls. <laughs> He's the E.T. version of Matthew McConaughey, someone in touch with the universe and comfortable in nothing but a pair of shorts. Oh, and he can talk a little trash as well. The world is 4,000 years old and can only be the product of intelligent design. Oh, that's horseshit! <gasps> Number 9. The Martians, Mars Attacks. <laughs> Stemming from the mind of Tim Burton, these aliens are physically challenged in the looks department, but damn it, that's what makes them so incredibly hysterical. One, a Martian friend is a carbon-based life form. Two, he breathes nitrogen. And three, the large cerebrum here indicates telepathic potential. Sure, their prominent brains are visible in plain sight, but that doesn't mean they're able to grasp the concept of a hippie unleashing a dove. These guys and gals came to Earth prepared, and they certainly take great pleasure in cultural chaos, but nothing could have prepared them for the music of Slim Whitman. Despite all the violence, the flamboyant little Martians are entertainers of the highest order, largely due to their creepy bug eyes and passive aggressive behavior. Number eight, Mike Wazowski, Monsters, Inc. And it looks like it's gonna be a perfect day to maybe, hey, just lie in bed, sleep in, or simply work out that slab that's hanging over the bed. He's rollable, pullable, and noble in his ways. Well, at least for a monster that pays his bills by scaring children. But like his pal Sully, Mike Wazowski is just trying to get by in Monstropolis. Come on, fight that flap! Fight that flap! Scary monsters don't have flap! And though he's not always the most proficient worker around, he's an entertainer at heart. But I love sports. Dodgeball was the best. Oh yeah, I was the fastest one out there. Of course, I was the ball. But I, I was the ball. And has no problem maintaining eye contact. In the wrong lighting, Mike could be mistaken for some type of freakish goblin, which does in fact come in handy. Hey, just hang on. Hello, hello, testing, testing. But once you get talking to him, you'll find that he's well versed in the art of conversation. In that case, let's keep it. I always wanted a pet that could kill me! He's a popular creature in the Pixar universe, but it was back at Monsters University where he developed his scare tactics and inspired fellow monsters with his gift for gab. Say hooray! Hooray! I can't believe it. I'm officially a college student! Number seven, Ted, Ted. <laughs> Find the buddies for life, right, Johnny? Fucking right. Here's a tiny furball that's not quite your average teddy bear, but not yet an official person. According to the law, that is. Oh my god, Teddy, look at this. It says if we want to have a baby, you're going to have to prove you're a person in a court of law. This is a nightmare. Then again, how many pieces of property can light up a bong and get completely blazed? Sure, Ted may have been dealt a tough hand, you know, being the world's only talking stuffed animal and all. I am a former celebrity in a minimum wage job. 
This, this, is, this is how the cast at different strokes feels. But somehow he livens up each day with his lust for life, including hard alcohol and sex. Stick ah! your finger in the loop of my tag. Ah! He'll tell it to you straight while simultaneously warming your heart with his contrived teddy bear smile. Lori was right about you. You cannot take responsibility for anything that goes on in your life. Oh, and you can? I don't have to, I'm a fucking teddy bear. He may not be appreciated by all, and he was part of a conspiracy to jerk off Tom Brady and Ted too. But at the end of the day, he just wants to be recognized for what he is, a Bostonite with a unique backstory. This is how everybody sang in the 90s. I'm such a baby, cause a dolphin's big bear friend. Number six, Rocket Raccoon, Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, yeah. Much like Ted, this creature has no kin to communicate with. In fact, there's nobody like him at all. As a crucial part of the Guardian's team, Rocket speaks with authority and carries a big stick. And by that we mean he carries a monster machine gun. The brilliance of his comedy emerges through his emotional backstory. Well, I didn't ask to get made! I didn't ask to be torn apart and put back together over and over and turned into some... Some little monster! And when it hits the fan, he maintains his focus, typically complemented by a well-placed zinger. Now I'm standing. Y'all happy? We're all standing up now. Bunch of jackasses standing in a circle. Rocket is short in stature and a snarly little beast, but to know him is to love him, as this genetically enhanced creature wears his heart on his sleeve, even if he's not always aware of it. Oh, I was just kidding about the leg. I just need these two things. What? No, I, th I thought it'd be funny. Was it funny? No, wait, what did he look like hopping around? I had to transfer him 30,000 units. <laughs> Number five, the Gremlins, Gremlins. Did you feed them after midnight? Well, I gave them some chicken. How does this transform into this? Simple, water, food, and sunlight. What was in that jar? Nothing, just water. Okay, maybe it wasn't the best idea for Rand Peltzer to bring home a mogwai, but look at him, what could go wrong? Well, everything. But fortunately for moviegoers, the nasty looking gremlins like to dress themselves up, giggle at pretty much everything, and even go to the movies. Of course, they kill everything in sight as well, led by the maniacal stripe, but they damn sure wreak havoc in style. Gizmo has plenty of comedic moments himself, but it's the absurdity and lunacy of the slimy gremlins that make the film such a joy to watch, much like the Krites from the 1986 film Critters. Number four, Dory Finding Nemo. Hi, I'm Dory. Hello, I'm Dory. Everybody loves a talking regal blue tang. But for Marlon, Dory's short-term memory is a bit distressing as they search for the long-lost Nemo. I'm so sorry. See, I, I suffer from short-term memory loss. Short-term memory loss. She's not quite as depressing in comparison to other sea creatures, though. That is, unless you consider her singing. And this only makes her unique quirks even more lovable. Oh, oh Dory. I love to swim in Dory. when you walk. Sure, Dory might have a few screws loose through no fault of her own. And while she may not ever shut her big yapper, life is always better when Dory's around. P. Sherman, 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney. <gasps> I remembered what it said. I usually forget things, but I remembered it that time. She's a performer of the sea and a loyal companion to anyone lucky enough to travel with her. But it doesn't matter, because no fish in this entire ocean is going to help me. Well, I'm helping you. Number three, The Minions, The Despicable Me franchise. The Minions is Kevin Stewart and Bob are three minuscule masters of the Minionese language. <laughs> They've been around since the dawn of time, which means they are well-versed in comedic timing and well-equipped to deal with any type of pressure. <laughs> well, maybe not. And yes, they are prone to depression, but these fruit-loving creatures find humor in the unlikeliest of situations. And of course, they're also tons of fun to watch. Listen up, please! After experiencing the Minions, you'll want to be friends with the Minions, but you might also have to learn their native language. 
Number 2. Timon and Pumbaa, The Lion King One of them has no meaning at all, well, at least in the Swahili language, while the other means foolish. When I was a young wart hug. Very nice. Thanks. Can you guess which is which? Played by Nathan Lane and Ernie Sabella, Timon and Pumbaa have a special relationship, as they live life based on their Hakuna Matata motto. It's our problem free philosophy. Hakuna Matata. Pumbaa has the capacity to clear out an entire forest with just one nasty fart. And it hurt that my friends never stood down While Timon has the intellectual acumen to keep everybody around despite the devastating gas. Yeah, it's our motto. What's the motto? Nothing. What's the motto with you? <laughs> Together, they make life easier for Simba and their best moments come through song, as the warthog and meerkat survive the fog of war and flatulence with a positive outlook on life. Whoa, whoa, time out. Let me get this straight. You know her, she knows you, but she wants to eat him. And everybody's okay with this? Did I miss something? Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. I did it! Let's get this tin can turned around. And I can't wait to see what my buddies all think of me. Just imagine how much cooler I'll be in summer. Don't tell the monkey. Derek, you are a selfish jerk. And guess what? I've met someone else. She's lime green, she has 14 little chunks of pineapple inside of her, and she is everything I deserve in life. And now for one dishonorable mention. I speak. The ability to speak does not make you intelligent. Now get out of here. No, no, Mrs. Stay. Mrs. Kojat and Binks. Mrs. your humble servant. That won't be necessary. Number one, Donkey, the Shrek franchise. Man, you almost burned the hair out my nose. Just like the time. <laughs> and then I ate some rotten berries. Man, I had some strong gases eking out of my butt that day. When an old hag tries to sell this creature off, he develops wings and flies away until he drops. You might have seen a house fly, maybe even a super fly, but I bet you ain't never seen a donkey fly. Fortunately, the fast-talking donkey joined up with Shrek for an experience that would bring him love, friendship, and plenty of witty banter. But you gotta have three. Stop singing! Well, it's no wonder you don't have any friends. Wow. Only a true friend would be that truly honest. Played by the legendary Eddie Murphy, who also voiced the comedic Mushu in the 1998 Disney film Mulan, Donkey just gives it to you raw. Dragon can attest to that. I guess it's just my animal magnetism. And he transcended the concept of an animated character through his deeply animated personality. We can stay up late, swapping manly stories, and in the morning, I'm making waffles. He's one bad dude in the most beautiful way. And Donkey don't take no mess, just like the titular character, Shrek. I'm an ogre. You know, grab your torch and pitchforks. Do you agree with our list? It's just awful. It's unwatchable. What's your favorite funny movie creature? My name is Doug. I have just met you, and I love you. For more mind-blowing top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. <laughs>